clay. He have to need that clay. And in the kneading of the clay is when the little impurities must be pulled out. He pulled out the little grass. He take the little pebbles out because these things would not be good if the vessel is formed with these things. But sometimes you see in the pulling out of these things, oh God have mercy, hallelujah, is what sometimes the clay don't like. And the clay doesn't understand as if the vessel is built with these things. It will mar the vessel. Prayerlessness is one of the things that mars the vessel. You must live in the throne room of God. You must live in the throne room of God. The prophets of God walk with their feet on the ground and they walk with their head in the cloud to remind you and I that I am man but then I am a man that need to hear from God. So my hair need to be at the place and the position where I can receive what does say it God. And every child of God, amen, hallelujah, must develop, amen, an attitude of prayer. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Prayer must become an attitude, amen, hallelujah, of a vessel that is in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot afford, amen, to become prayerless. When you become prayerless, you become powerless. Let me tell you something friend of mine and when you become powerless you then become a target for the attack of the enemy the devil don't come after child children of God who are on their knees and in prayer seeking the mind of God because let me tell you something when you are in prayer and you're upon your knees and seeking the mind of God brother you are armed and you are dangerous I said you are armed and you are dangerous when you're upon your knees and you call him on the name of the Lord because the devil don't play with your friend of mine because you will chew him up and you will spit him out. But he thrive in the closet of the prayerless. But he rides way on the perimeter of those who are in prayer and seeking the mind of God because he is looking to try to catch you in the hour when you're not in prayer but Daniel set his face to seek the Lord oh God they tried amen all manner of things but they had to accuse Daniel because of his faithfulness to God he pushed the window open as he always would and he sought the face of the Lord let prayer meet you in good times. Let prayer meet you in bad times. Let prayer meet you all the time. Ah, Lord. Because when you're in prayer, you're armed and you're dangerous. The devil don't have time to play with you. Huh? Mm. Another thing that mars the vessel is gossip. Well, I got a good hot story just hot off the press. If only I tell you. Hot off the press. You know. The bomb, the express, the news day. I'm talking papers in TNT. All these papers carrying the story. Don't you know about it? If only you know. Tell that same person, quote five scriptures for you without looking in the Bible. Because gossip mars the vessel. Gossip twists the vessel. Because from the time a story leaves my lips, it gone to Betty, Susie, and then Jacqueline get it down the step from the time Jacqueline received the message chain six times. Gossip mars the vessel. If you want to talk, talk about Jesus. Talk about Jesus. Well, my God, why pastor had to wear khaki pants with a white shirt 
with a red tie, brown belt, brown shoes tonight. Well, quite frankly, that ain't your business at all. See, because here is where gossip goes. Why pastor had to put Christmas things hang up in the church? Why is in your house? Hmm? Why you had to put it inside the church and all around the column in front? Who you think this is a Christmas tree or what? You know what I mean? And you ain't gonna tell the man of God that and you will go home and talk with it. Betty, Susie, Janice, Jacqueline, uh, Jerome, and, 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 and Peter and John and all of them. And that's how gossip goes. And gossip mars the vessel. It twists the vessel. It makes the vessel all the shape and all the form. In Trinidad, people say, well, let me give you a piece of my mind. I've been preaching to that church in Tonopuna recently. I say, hear me out. I say, when a child of God gives somebody a piece of their mind, that person's supposed to run down the street and become a mighty witness for God. Because you just gave them a piece of your mind and the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. That person supposed to live Eddie Fire and say, Glory! Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You just gave them a piece of your mind. Yeah. You're supposed to edify that person, build them up in the faith. Yeah. So you better make sure what a piece of your mind is. Huh? Unfaithfulness mars the vessel. God don't want you to be unfaithful. God want you to be faithful. He chastised Israel as becoming an unfaithful wife. He said, look what I did for you. I bring you to the wilderness. I watered you. When you were thirsty, I fed you when you were hungry. I give you shelter. I give you a house you did not have. Land you did not have. And when you possess these things, you walk away from me. Huh? I look a brother in the face one time, one time in the church, I preach a message. The name of it was Enough is Enough. And after that message, I prophesy some things to some people in that church. I say, God going to give you a car. God going to bless you. God going to give you some. God going to give you this. And I say, the day God give it, you remember who gave it. Because hear me, there are times God give people things, Pastor. And afterwards, they think it is theirs. They think it's theirs. I look a good brother in the face one day. I said, hear me out. Somebody was asking him for a ride. So I'm, I, I'm inside the church, you know. So I step outside the church and I heard um, he was grumbling. So I called him. I said, come. And I look him straight to the face. And I said, you are a wicked human being. I said, you're wicked. I said, because you know what? I said, you rode my car up, down, left, right, center, and across. You did what you want in it. You did what you want with it. And I said, today, God bless you with a vehicle. I said, when you didn't have one, I took you in timber too. I said, but today God gave you one and you grumbling to help a sister with a ride home? I said, you're a wicked human being. People sometimes think when God bless them, God bless them for themselves and they become selfish. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. God don't bless you for you. God bless you to become a blessing to others. Don't ask God for a blessing if you're not willing to share it. Amen. If you're not willing to share your blessing, then don't ask God for one. Amen. I look a brother in the face one day and I say, God ain't going to give you nothing. 
That's hard. Eh? I say because you know why. I say because your motive is bad. God normally examines motive. One person say he probed the core and he tests the root. God don't want to know that I want something. God wants to know why I want.